Hi guys, welcome back to The Pulse. I'm Marcel, your host. Today, I'm gonna to take a full spectrum look at all of the data we've collected, the various types of data we collected, and I'm not gonna post specific studies here, although I may show some pictures of different studies. What I'd like for you guys to do is sort of do some searching with me and myself and some of you common posters, uh, post some stuff in the comments that share different types of data that support NMN or question NMN. Asking questions is totally fine. The question that came up that sparked this thought, and it comes up often, is where is the definitive clinical data supporting the efficacy of NMN? And this is something that we should all want. And my approach to this might surprise you. I also want to see that data. Matter of fact, I, want, I may want to see it more than you. I want to see long-term clinical, definitive human clinical trials, but they're gonna take decades to perform. We've been studying aging, the effects of aging for five decades, pretty robustly at very, in various ways, right? So it started off in, around 1970, and we, there was a discovery made that caloric restriction impacted aging and that you could slow down the effects of aging by giving mice at first, uh, rodents, giving them uh, or taking from them their calorie uh, intake, right? Reducing their calorie intake. This, uh, we didn't know, they thought there was gonna be a pathway. So they started looking for a specific pathway and then it turned out it impacted all pathways related to aging. So there was no single pathway determined at that time. And ultimately, the current theory, or the running theory coming out of the David Sinclair camp and elsewhere, is that there, it's an information-related issue and that, we, that our cells, our DNA, loses the accuracy of re replicating that information over time. So we're looking for backup copies and we're into this information theory of aging. But at the time, it was believed there must be some kind of pathway that caloric restriction was impacting. And so then you ask, okay, well, this is mice. Well, ultimately, they switched in the 80s to primates, and they had the same results. And then ultimately, they eventually started testing humans. And over the past couple decades, it's been... And, and that's still ongoing, by the way. Caloric restriction, we still don't have definitive human clinical data. But... It suggests very strongly that the, the research done on animals or what are called model organisms with, in, in, with respect to aging, like we're not mice, we're not similar in all respects to mice, but when it comes to aging, there are similarities in our molecular makeup and the things that impact mice aging, impact primates aging, and impact human aging. So you, you get on down the line and things are very similar. So the first aspect of this sort of full spectrum analysis is to look at the, well, first of all, how did we get to these plant compounds to begin with? Like NMN exists in cucumbers and broccoli and cabbage um, and uh, avocados, which I eat most of that often. I eat cucumbers and avocados very often. I've decided to hedge my bets as much as possible. Uh, and that's how I approach it. Like I take NMN every day based on the science I'm going to spell out for you that we're going to be pointing to with various links from a collective uh, you know, group. But the bottom line is the first, how do we narrow down these molecules? Um, it was done in labs through computer models. And then once they found the candidates, they began the mice testing, the rodent testing. It, it didn't always happen in this order, but for all intents and purposes, this was the this is the order of the research, right? We have a lot of animal studies, specifically mice studies, showing that NMN creates similar anti-aging effects or slowing down of aging or extending health span in mice. It's similar to caloric restriction. Matter of fact, in some studies, they removed the caloric restriction aspect and just used the NMN and got the same kinds of results as with caloric restriction. So it mimicked the results in mice as with caloric restriction. Now, the next step was, okay, wow, humans should take this maybe, right? <laughs> the mice didn't get sick, they didn't get cancer, unless they were impregnated with cancer, right? And then they could grow the cancer, but that's another topic, right? People without cancer uh, aren't getting NMN. 
Uh, if you already have it, I do say it's a caveat to all of this. You, should, you probably shouldn't take it, but there's a lot of things you should be doing if you've got active cancer, right? You need an oncologist. You need a doctor to address that. But mice weren't getting any sicker by taking NMN, and so they started human safety trials. They began in Japan a few years ago, and this has been going on. And in all of these safety trials, NMN, at least in the short term, you know, we don't know the long term ramifications of taking NMN, but in the short term, it's safe for human consumption. So we have, you know, compelling scientific computer and animal study data. We have a reassuring safety data, and then we move on to the anecdotal evidence. Okay, I take it, I wait. What happened to me, right? Or I take it and I go about my regular day, my regular business, and I see how my body responds to exercise, which is how I approached it. Well, it's pretty exciting when you look at the anecdotal evidence. Uh, I would say very exciting, and it's what this channel has focused a lot on, my own evidence, but also We've had over 2,000, I think we're going on 3,000 viewers that have used the code and gone and gotten NMN, and they've been reporting their results. And we're running around 80% feeling short-term effects. Doesn't mean the other 10, 20% won't feel longer-term effects, but pretty exciting stuff. Matter of fact, it's impacted the resale data. Now, the resale or reorder data of NMN is through the roof. By all accounts, it's the highest or among the highest of any supplement on the market. The companies I've spoken with, and this is why there is so much enthusiasm for NMN, it's quite amazing the reordered data. It exceeds, it blows the doors off of NR, by the way, just as a side note from the companies I've talked to that sell both. NMN has a very high, and it's not cheap. It's an expensive molecule. And this is, you know, Efficacy, like personal results, are people really going to keep ordering something? A lot of people have commented, this was my approach. Like I avoided NMN because it was cost prohibitive. You know, it just didn't make sense. I couldn't justify the cost with a family, with two young kids, to start, start spending a couple, two, three hundred hours a month taking NMN. Now the cost came down. When the cost came down, I started trying it when I saw the results and I realized this is going to impact everything in my life, then the value proposition shifted and it became well worth the price. Now I got burned taking a fake NMN, which I'm going to tie into this discussion as well. And I've talked about that. I take it on Amazon, I took it, bought it from Amazon and took it for months. Wasn't feeling the same impacts. I thought that maybe there was a honeymoon period that wore off. As soon as I found out I was taking fake NMN, I went out, found a reliable source, tested it, took, a, it, took it to a lab myself, and uh, started taking it immediately back to the results I was getting with the first NMN that I took for a couple months. So I got a little greedy. I tried to save money. I've talked about that story before. And then I just keep reordering it, reordering it, reordering it. Now, we're at the point now, and I've been documenting this, and this is, I think, why we got the question. You know, give us the clinical data. Give us the clinical data. Again, I want the clinical data. But... What we also want is evidence-based data. In other words, doctors who are giving it to patients and then making observations. And that's what we have, and that's what I've been reporting on lately, interviewing doctors who have been giving their patients NMN or NAD boosters in general. We've talked to multiple scientists and doctors involved with, the, with this field of NAD boosting. And they've witnessed not only... Uh, anecdotal results where someone says, I feel better, but also NAD levels going up in their blood and also inflammation coming down, oxidative stress being reduced and senescence being reduced in correlation with taking NMN specifically. So there's some very fascinating and exciting research going on in the field, right? In the field of medicine. And uh, you can't, without observing uh, you undermine uh, the science of medicine if you're not observing your patients. It's actually a big problem because there isn't enough continuity of care right now in the medical profession due to cost restrictions, due to time restrictions, due to people going to this clinic or a, a clinic that's maybe after hours seeing different doctors. So the continuity of care has deteriorated over the past couple decades especially 
And this is impacting this observability. It's why I always say, if you're taking an amen, consult with your doctor. Get your levels tested, ideally before, during, and then after a while. And get a full medical picture. Um, now we have, we're at this other step of evidence, right? The suggestive data. The FDA is trying to remove NMN as a supplement. Now, this is a big, big story that we cover here a lot. And I, my question for you is, the data that was submitted with the IND from Metro Biotech to the FDA includes some preliminary trial data. Now, what is that data? What in that data? We all know the debate about the date of that filing. And does it actually precede NMN being sold as a supplement, which many, including Daniel Fabricant, from his research says it can't, but we don't have the date, so we need to know for sure. And they're not sharing that information. But what they're also not sharing is the preliminary clinical data that was collected and submitted along with that IND. So what is it? What do they know about NMN? A lot of people just instinctively jumped in the comments when, N when FDA tried to pull NMN from the market, not for safety reasons, by the way. They've, they've acknowledged that it's a safe supplement. And when it was when they tried to pull it, right, and I say try because it, no final action has been taken yet, and we're hoping for this enforcement discretion that we're still waiting to hear from them about. But a lot of people jumped down the comments and said, hey, this is just more evidence that it works. Like some people said, and I know that they're jumping the gun on this, but think about this for a moment. A lot of people just, the reaction was, this is proof. This is proof. Because this is how we've been indoctrinated. Like FDA protects drug companies. They're not going to protect them for something that doesn't work at all. And why would they spend money? There's another thing that, that's happening right now with government is they won't make certain investigations unless those are funded by the private sector. Like they literally refused, FTC refused to investigate Amazon for selling fake supplements unless private industry paid for the investigation. True story. So you have to really wonder, well, did Metro Biotech promise to pay the FDA's legal costs? for defending their interests, their trademark uh, claim for, for NMN. Going to be interesting to see how that plays out because funding has tightened. So this story has become more complex. Now you have a $100 million industry that's glad, very glad to spend a few million dollars defending their right to sell NMN. So we know the supplement industry is large enough in the NMN sphere that they're going to try to protect NMN. The question is, what is going to happen with Metro Biotech? Are they going to sell out to a larger drug company and then they're going to come in and sweep in and pay for the legal costs? Or is FDA going to go it alone? They've not shown that they've been inclined to fly in the face of public interest when there is a citizen petition that's been filed, which I covered in my last video. Now, as I said, I also want the clinical data, but I want a decades long clinical data. I want 50, 60 years. And uh, it's going to cost a lot of money. And we could take snapshots as we go, kind of like when we get a picture from Mars, you get little sections of it because it comes in packets. We're going to get packets of information, but we need a long-term clinical study. NMN, for the reasons I just spelled out, deserves a honest, long-term clinical, human clinical data performance, right? We deserve these trials. We deserve to collect this data. We need to know the dosages. What's a proper dosage? We need to know how to measure them. Uh, should it be with wearable technologies? Should it be blood tests? Um, what should be observable? What should be tested as far as a physical performance test? What are the long-term impacts of taking NMN? And what can we take with NMN to enhance the results of NMN? Like NMN on its own, many people take other things. I take other things with it. Again, listening to Dr. Sinclair, who beat the drum for NMN for so long, but now he's nowhere when it comes to defending it, right? It's really odd. But what should we be taking with NMN? I'd like to know. So there's a lot of things I'd like to know to fill out this full spectrum data analysis of NMN. I think NMN getting pulled from Amazon is a blessing in disguise. 
I think it's good, even though it undermines the argument for making NMN uh, a drug only and not a supplement. I believe it should exist in the sphere, in, this, in the interest of a full spectrum, right? There should be a full spectrum of availability. There should be NMN as supplements. There should be NMN as drugs, maybe light, maybe more aggressive, maybe NMN max drugs. Uh, not NMN Max, that was a fake NMN brand that I took for seven months, but a maximum dosage, right, of real NMN. We need better testing, and uh, I think supplements at, at Amazon, it's interesting that they so quickly pulled it uh, because they're a big target, and they don't want to be, they've already been fined before for uh, infractions that violated the FTC law, so they don't want to get fined again, so it's, it's understandable that they would pull it. I'm just happy that they pulled it. Uh, because a, two-thirds of it was fake or adultered. So that's the silver lining of the whole Amazon move. It shouldn't cause fear. Matter of fact, the, the reasons I state should, should cause confidence and justification for more data. I'll keep you guys posted with everything I find out. Post in the comments various studies. Let's flood the video comments here with various studies and data and uh, use it as a source of resource and keep on keeping on. Uh, if you want to take NMN, I take Do Not Age NMN. The discount code is in the description, as always. Thanks for watching.